Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Vince. And the first thing I want to say is thank you to everyone who has subscribed and been watching my videos. Uh, we have gotten up to 1,000 subscribers. Woo! So that's awesome. Um, and I'm just really appreciative of everyone who's been part of this journey with me. Uh, most of my videos are all about what I'm learning and, and what I'm going through and I think that it's a really common experience So I hope that it's been helpful to have somebody that's putting it all out on the internet and just um, willing to To show that for you guys so that you can learn and be like, oh, okay This is kind of the pace or this is what's normal and I just want to say thank you very much I plan to continue to make videos I will be varying the content um, because I'm just taking you guys along on my journey. So it may not look the same as yours. There may be some of you that might drop off, hopefully not too many, um, but I'm sure we'll meet others along the way as well. So more about that later. As you may have seen in the video, I got fired. Yeah, that happened. Um, so this video is not gonna be a rant against my former employer. Uh, this is a what did we learn video and uh, what do we do going forward and maybe this will be encouraging to some of you that may find yourselves in the same situation one day hopefully not the first thing I want to say is that um, they were very gracious in the way that they fired me and to be honest it could not have been better timing uh, another life update I just had a baby uh, about three weeks ago and so I took some paternity leave and when I came back from paternity leave before I sat down at my desk or anything they let me go and uh, the reason it, it wasn't anything crazy uh, that I did I didn't you know burn down any servers or make any crazy mistakes um, they did show me one customer complaint um, but I don't think that's grounds for firing uh, but I think that their expectations were a little higher than what I was able to deliver and unfortunately because it's a very fast-paced um, environment and a small team they weren't able to uh, provide me the training to get me up to speed um, and so the reason that they gave me for for letting me go was that I was not experienced enough um, which is a little strange because I felt like I gave a pretty accurate representation of my experience and my skill level during the interview um, but they decided after six months that it wasn't working out and I, I agree to be honest I felt the same way I felt like it wasn't a good fit um, the reasons that I would have said were it was more based on the relationship that I had with my direct supervisor and the communication was poor um, and it was just interpersonal problems that I was having. Um, so my mentality was that I was going to try to stick it out um, and give it at least one solid year of, of effort. And if it still hadn't improved after one year, then I was going to go ahead and look for another job. I was just telling myself, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to try to figure this out. If it's really a skill level thing, I'm going to try to upskill. And I gained two certifications while I was there. Um, if it's a interpersonal problem, I'm going to try to resolve that with this person by speaking directly to them. If it's a communication problem, I'm going to try to work on my communication. Uh, and I went to other mentors and, and people outside of work and, and explained the situation to them as best as I could and asked for advice and tried to follow that advice, but it didn't work out. So I don't see it as a, a failure. I just see it as, you know, uh, it wasn't a good fit. And now I just have an opportunity to find something new and something different. So hopefully that's an encouragement for you guys. Maybe you do make a huge mistake. Maybe you do, uh, I don't know, lose a customer's backups or something and then their servers go down. It's not the end of the world. You know, everyone makes mistakes. And uh, I think the key is to ask yourself, what did I learn from this? And if you don't learn something from it, then it's a waste and it's a painful experience. So why waste a painful experience? Uh, no, I want to take away some lessons from it. So first thing, experience is King. And I, I actually uh, was speaking with a placement agency yesterday on the phone. Uh, my former employer was kind enough to connect me with a couple of placement agencies. They were really cool about it, how they let me go. Um, they're a great company. And this guy worked in tech for 15 years and he said it, experience is king. You know, if I had had more experience, I probably would have been at the level that they were wanting at that former job. And now I'm looking for a new full-time job. So experience is the number one best thing you can do uh, to make yourself more valuable 
on the job market. The reason is because if you have experience, it means you've done it before. And if you've done it before, it means you know how to do it. So that's what the employer cares about at the end of the day. They don't even understand what your job requires of you necessarily, but they want to know that you know how to get it done. You know how to fix it. You know how to create something new, come up with solutions, right? So how do you get experience without having experience to get a job? Well, certifications, I would say, are the next most valuable thing you can have while looking for a new job. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me and ask me about certifications. I plan on making a video dedicated specifically to that. Um, but I think generally Net Network Plus, or sorry, A Plus, Network Plus, Security Plus, like those are your, that's your trifecta of like entry level, right? I think from what I've been hearing from people, after those first three, you kind of want to start specializing. So do you want to go into more into networking? Do you want to be a network admin? Uh, do you want to get into uh, cybersecurity? Maybe take your CEH or EJPT. There's a whole bunch of certifications there as well. Um, maybe you want to go into more towards cloud. Um, that's my personal plan. So you want to get an Azure or an AWS certification. Um, so anyways, experience, certifications, and unfortunately, I think education is last on the list. The reason that certifications are more valuable to employers than education is because certifications are standardized. If you have a certification, it is subject specific. They have um, a basic grasp of what you actually learned, what you had to learn to pass that exam. And it's the same across the board. Everyone having that certification should understand these concepts, right? Education is all over the place. You could have a degree from one school and a degree from another school, or even two students from the same school that have the same degree, and their understanding of the concepts is completely different. And that depends on how hard that they worked at it, it depends on the professors they had, the course material they went through, how many hands-on labs did they have in that in that course. It's it's all over the place. So I think it's, it's less meaningful and less reliable to employers. Uh, however, some employers still do require, or say they require, you know, a bachelor's in computer science or a related field. So it's not worthless. It's just not not as much of a guarantee as certifications or experience might be for certain jobs. Second thing that I learned from getting fired is, and not that I didn't do this, but be honest in your interviews. Now, uh, as I said, I think I was pretty honest in my interview, but I also had this mentality of like trying to uh, convince them that I could do the job. Uh, which I don't think necessarily should be the way that you think about going into an interv in, in interview. I think that you should put things on your resume that you're confident answering questions about. Because if you put something on your interview and they ask you a technical question about it and you can't answer it, then you just look like a liar. People say fake it till you make it. They say ignore job requirements. I do think there's some merit to ignoring job requirements because the job posting may have been listed by someone who doesn't really understand the technical side of the job. But... In the, once you get to the interview, I would say, speak to what you know uh, and be real about what you know how to do. Don't give a false projection of what you know how to do because you know, if you can't perform once you get into that role, then you're just wasting everyone's time, including your own. Third thing I learned is don't be discouraged. Just keep going. Uh, maybe you don't find the right job right off the bat. Maybe you, you read a job description, you get into the job and you find out you hate it. Well, there are so many different opportunities in the IT world that, you know, it doesn't mean the IT is not for you. It doesn't even mean that that niche of that field is not for you. Maybe you just need a different position. Maybe you need a different company. Um, there's, there's so much variance within uh, the working world that I'm sure you can find something that fits. Fourth thing I learned at this job and from getting let go from this job was that communication skills are not to be underestimated. Uh, I believe it's possible that if I had had better communication, especially in the very beginning, because I felt like I, I got off on the wrong foot with my supervisor from the beginning, um, it's possible that I could have uh, fit in and found a place there. Uh, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to work it out. So I'm very uh, conflict averse, my personality type. I don't enjoy conflict. I don't think there's that many people that do. It's kind of an uncomfortable situation for most people. Um, but some people are much more direct and they're much better at saying what they're thinking when they're thinking it. Uh, I tend to sit back and analyze first and then approach carefully and slowly. Um, it did not work very well in this environment. It was very fast paced. Um, 
people rarely had time to talk, you know, everything was needed to be super quick and super snappy as far as communication. You had to get to the point very quickly and beating around the bush and hemming and hawing just got people upset. I don't know necessarily how you improve communication except by practicing it. Um, practice having uncomfortable con conversations, like don't run away from uh, conflict it, because usually it's going to cause more problems for you later on down the road, you know, and people appreciate you. Um, people can appreciate you being direct and just getting to the point, especially when time is money. So where do we go from here? Well, it, it just so happened that I was already working a side job. And uh, actually, I found this side job through Nerd App, which I'll have the link down below if you guys want to sign up. It's like a gig economy thing for IT. It's pretty cool. So I had this side job as a data center technician, and I was um, working it in the morning, like super crazy early in the morning before my full time job. And so I went into work on a Tuesday, and they let me go, and I drove home and texted the my point of contact for the side job and i was like hey i'm actually available right now and, and i went in that same day and just started working at this other job uh pretty much full time so so it, things worked out really really well um and like i am looking for a, a more reliable full-time job but it doesn't even feel like i'm out of work right now it just feels like well i'm actually making a little bit more and i can kind of make my own schedule so it's it's pretty awesome actually so I'm looking for a job, right? Um, so I didn't know all this when I was first getting into IT, uh, but there are placement agencies that they don't take any money out of your paycheck. They actually just charge the company an additional like finder's fee on top of what the company is gonna be paying you. So they tell, so they have all these contacts, right? They have contacts with all these tech companies and the tech companies will tell them, hey, we're looking for so-and-so that has this experience for this role and the tech and then I give my resume to the placement agency and they see oh this is a good fit and so they charge the company for finding me and then the company pays me whatever I tell the placement agency that I want to make um, assuming that's agreeable to the company so you know that could be an option um, it's pretty hard to look for a job on your own but that's also definitely doable I mean that's the first job that I had that's how I got it and the second job I had uh, through a friend that I knew so and now I'm trying placement agencies and I'm also, you know, still using all the other uh, avenues that are available to me as well. So so where do we go from here? We, we find a new job and we keep going. And, you know, I think it was a really humbling experience um, being in the position that I was in where I was not able to meet my employer's expectations um, and I was constantly being corrected. And I think that that was healthy for me and for my ego to shrink a little bit. And I think my expectations, because of that experience, my expectations now are a lot more realistic in terms of, okay, first of all, what am I worth? You know, I have a year and a half of experience. I have the trifecta of entry level certifications. Uh, what am I worth? What can I expect to make? Um, and secondly, like what position can I expect? Am I a level one tech? Am I a level two? Am I an admin? No, like I need to, to be reasonable with where I'm at and realize that even though I want so badly to get to this level, I'm, I'm still down here. So, you know, that, and that's okay. Like accepting reality and making the best of it is the only way to move forward. So, um, thank you for listening to my story time episode. Uh, I hope this is helpful to some of you guys out there, maybe encouraging. I am honestly grateful for the experience that I've gone through and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye.